Okay. Um, We can just start. I think um, it's like slow ramp up. So I hope maybe this is the first class. Like, okay, first this is like my first class teaching at MIT. So uh, apparently something will happen during the middle of the course. So please forgive me anything bad if anything bad happens. And uh, yeah, so this class is called like visual design in scholarly communication, which is co-taught by uh, Lucas and I. Which I should show Lucas face, uh, and and Lucas should say hi to people here as well. Hello, everyone. I'll be there in a week or so. But yeah, nice to meet you all, um, even though I can't really see you right now. But um, I trust oh. you. Um, yeah. Um, also, Shannon, can you share your screen, by the way? So like, Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I'll, I'll do that now. That's a good point. Uh, okay, I'll share this whole desktop. And OK, which is which should be working. Yeah. So Lucas and I are both. Thanks, Lucas. Lucas and I are both like grad students at CCL. Uh, Lucas is third year, I'm second year. We share some interest in natural language processing. And uh, Lucas is also more on the machine learning side, while I'm being slightly more on the uh, HCI side. Yeah. OK, so let's remove this annoying floating control thing. And oh, it's not going anywhere, huh? Disable, uh, hide. Cool. So class logistics. So uh, the time is, is 1 to 2.30, uh, Tuesday and Thursdays here. Like It will last for three weeks. Uh, and uh, next week, we'll, uh, according to the plan, we'll have uh, Professor uh, Andrew Head give us a, a talk in terms of like better understanding of math symbols. But other than that, it will be looks and I to teach this class. Uh, we have a website, uh, bettervisual.github.io. Uh, there's this link to join the Slack channel, which happened to be the same name, better slash visual. Uh, and we'll be posting all these recordings, slides, as well as like lecture notes on, on this website. So uh, don't worry if you miss a class or two, uh, it will just show up there. Uh, okay. So uh, all this class will be recorded. Um, so I, like I said, there will be two set of cameras. One is like this like Zoom live camera. So, and then this is the other like high quality like recordings so, such that if you watch it on YouTube, you, you might feel better like, instead of like watching this like low quality Zoom videos. And if you need any accommodation, just let us know and uh, we, are, uh, we can definitely try to accommodate whatever you need here. Okay, so P sets, uh, good news, there's no P set in this class. And uh, uh, the, your next paper or write up is just a P set. So our goal here is just trying to, uh, you know, teach you the kind of, principles and the skills so you can adapt what you've learned in this class when designing your next figure for, for or maybe complex tables or whatever it is for your next write-up. And then there's another realization class next semester taught by uh, Arwind, Professor Arwind. Uh, he's a great guy and then, and then, and then there, are, there are a ton of amazing resources for that. Uh, and finally, there are some nice readings uh, which I really suggest if you have time, you want to take a look at these readings. Because I think uh, these books are really easy to read because they are like graphical. You know, it's not like uh, the whole book with you know, like 200 pages of pure text or math symbols, but they're mostly like graphical. And the goal is trying to teach you, just give you examples, and to teach you some like, principles to think about, to reason about a visual communication, which is like a good pointer resources. And after that, uh, I think we finished this part, and then we can switch to the main slide today, which is um, uh, fundamentals. Okay, let me try to present this. Okay, so fundamentals. So in this today's part, we're going to focus on four big things. One is why do we make visuals? And then, as long as we know what, why we're making these visuals, then we can start to think about, OK, what constitutes a good visual? And finally, how do you make such visuals? And then, and then done, right? We, we, we're good, right? <laughs> like, we know everything. Uh, but actually, no. Uh, we are going to do some case study, and I'll show you some of my personal journeys for making some of my figures in recent papers. And I hope this thing, this package, can give you like a somewhat like starter for thinking about your next visuals or when you make your next tables and etc you will figure out you will, maybe something here will be helpful to you okay 
So the first point is why do we need visuals? So um, um, it's, it's kind of all personal to me, but whenever I write papers or write any write-ups, there's sort of like intuition or like internal motives for me to start typing, but also draw something with pen and paper, or maybe just lay something on, on this like Figma canvas, right? So I don't know if that's true for you, but um, uh, uh, maybe we can have like sharing or maybe like just curious like your interest or maybe your like experience of making figures in like write-ups. Does anybody want to share or? Okay, um, yeah, maybe this is not like bigger thing, but I think overall the goal I feel is uh, the first thing is to help us communicate, which you know, I, I took a figure from one of my previous paper here, but I, if you want to communicate this idea in text, it will be very clumsy. So basically, this figure tells us like, oh, this is a pipeline of processing this original image um, in, with different models, with different like methods, and then finally you, you, you have quality controls and then, and then d different kind of methods, right? So if you go from up to top, you see there's like clearly like this over like this layers, just telling you how like at each step, it gives you like some structural information added to the document. And then, and then, and then finally, um, um, uh, this thing is like trying to like draw your attention to look at it. But then imagine if you were to describe this whole pipeline in pure text. Uh, I don't know, maybe it takes like a whole page of the text. Well, like, I don't know if people really understand what's going on after reading that piece. Um, there are similar other examples, which I made before. Um, so uh, there are like complex structures, there are some like embedding projections, etc. which there are virtually, there's, there's no easy way to communicate through just text, right? And I really want to focus on this example here, which is, this shows you the, the, the like, the, the, the metric called like intersection over union. So basically the idea is, you know, you take the union of the two uh, squares here, that's the union area, and you take the intersection, the, the, the dark area, that's the intersection region, and then, and then, and then this try to give you a sense of like how this metric is, is, is computed, as well as like what's the rough ratio and the scores. And then and here we start to get some like interesting territory because um, um, uh, having, there are just, sort of visuals that can convey something that is not directly uh, communicatable through text. And I'll show you the other famous example of the uh, ASCOMS quartet. Basically, there, the idea is like there are four distinctive data sets. Like they're very different, like I plot the dots here. And then, and then the, the, the unique feature is like they have the same average standard deviation as well regression lines. So, so like, like the, the red line is a re regression line, and then, and then basically you see they have the pretty much the same shape in terms of the, the, state, like the, the, the regression line as well as the rough feeling of average score. If I just tell you, hey, like we have four data sets with, us, with the same statistics, then you will say, oh, they must be pretty similar. But then if I show this plot, it's pretty evident they are like dramatically different. And then this is like the, the, like the next level, which is like visuals can try to insert something and we try to express something that is not directly applicable to say in text, right? And then, and then going deeper, this is get us to this, uh, this, 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 this uh, called like uh, semi-zoography type of structure, which is, this, this is a figure taken from the movie Arrival, basically. Uh, this, this is a, a, a like visual language created by aliens in the movie, or maybe in the novel as well, uh, by Te Chiang. But basic idea is like, they create these visuals to directly communicate ideas to you without um, correlating back to the speech, right? So basically, like, the, the, like I, I could not read that, but the claim from the movie was, okay, as an alien, if you read this figure, you just know what they're talking about. Maybe too abstract, right? But actually, we indeed use this. We communicate through emojis, right? So, uh, uh, like, I don't know, like if you send uh, maybe this emoji uh, at different times, maybe you're expressing different kind of thoughts, right? You can interpret the thoughts that communicate by the other person, right? But 
literally nothing was t nothing was typed in the chat, right? But I just see the emoji, and then maybe you know it was like oh, I'm pretty tired from work, right? I'm pretty upset from something like my my friend said to me, right? Uh, but but this is like just trying to show you that we humans have the natural ability or instinct to communicate through this type of graphical fashion, right? And then finally, uh, visuals can help us think. So uh, I, I, this is not my figure, this is from a different paper talking about uh, uh, reinforced learning from human feedback. Uh, but I saw a quote on Twitter saying that, you know, uh, the best way to make people not understand the concept is to make a figure like this. <laughs> so the, the idea is um, 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 through the process of, of making the visuals, um, it, like the, the, or maybe the process of making visuals is trying to help us think and understand what are the key concepts, what are the flow, and what are you know, the starting point or the end point or the end goal here, right? But I, I, think, I, think, I think from this figure, it's like it, 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 there's a ton of materials in this figure, but I, I feel like challenging to, to figure out where I should start looking at. And, and, and then I started getting the maze of all these arrows and then, and then pointers, so I sort of get, got lost in the end about what to think about this giant space of knowledge in terms of reinforced learning and then, and then, and then uh, 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 you know, alignment with human feedback, et cetera. And, and, and then I think this is a good start, this point for us to transist into, you know, like what constitute a good visual, but I want to stop for a second in case you have any thoughts or questions. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's jump to the next one. Okay. So uh, I've tried to check. I try to check many different materials about what constitutes a good visual. Uh, they are a lot of kind of prescriptive, but I feel like a very cool and funny way to do is this. We should get our hands dirty to do some experiment with this ASCOM data set we just showed you, which is this one. Uh, you know, we are going to do some experiment trying to change this plot, remove some content. Or maybe completely like like destroy the visualization, and maybe the first thing is okay. Assuming I'm a minimalist, minimalist, and I want to simplify this plot. There's too much stuff here, right? Why don't we just remove stuff? So okay, let's remove the legend. Who who cares about legend, right? Uh, maybe the axis could be removed, and regression line. They're the same. Why don't we show them? Um, finally, we remove. The, like the title of the plot, that's a typo. And then, and then finally, uh, I don't know, if I show you this, like close your eyes and, and then, then look at this again. Like, like what is this, <laughs> right? Like, like apparently I just show you a bunch of dots and then, and then they seem to have some structures and patterns, but actually what's my takeaway from seeing this bunch of dots, right? So I think this is a, maybe the first finding, which is like good visuals to communicate the intended information uh, very effectively. Because this is like ineffective communication, right? There's virtually nothing. Only the intended goal is trying to say, oh, they have the same like means, they have the same uh, 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 regression lines. It's not communicated through this plot, right? Okay. Let's try another time, which is uh, attempts to embellish. So here, uh, Maybe I want to do something in the opposite direction, which is, oh, this plot is pretty dry, right? There's nothing in it, right? Can I uh, uh, add something there, you know, enrich the plot? And then, and then one way to do something like, okay, yeah, we can add edge colors to the dots, right? Marvelous. And uh, we can try to do some, I don't know, maybe have the dashed regression line. Looks cool. And then, and, then, and then, you know what? We can also add some grid lines, right? The, you know, it feels like professional, right? There are many like, you know, details in this regression lines. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, but actually, think again. Do we really add any new information in this plot here, right? So we add a ton of stuff, right? We add a lot of like embellishments, but actually, People see this and then, oh yeah, they are still the same, right? They're still talking about, oh yeah, it's still, you know, the same kind of structure of the data. Yeah, they get it, right? 
so I think the, the second finding is like good visual should communicate the intended information efficiently. Think about like, you know, the amount of effort you've done here to do something extra, but actually adding new va no values for this one, right? So that could be like, I don't know, suboptimal, uh, uh, you know, for your time and energy. Okay. Then the second, the third point is unintended, unintentional distort. And this is very like practical case because as researchers, we have to squeeze our figures, our text to fit the page limit in the submission, right? Because you know, assuming you are the night, you are the night before the submission time, and then and then you have like I don't know two whole paragraphs exceeding the page limit, and then there's a natural instinct saying, oh hey, can we squeeze some spaces from the figure so we can have the extra text being somewhere, right? And then let's do this journey. So here I'm showing the width of the figure as this giant. And then I'm showing you how we can just reduce the way, the, the width step by step, okay? So first one is, okay, we can change the aspect ratio, right? So remember here for this axis, we use this like, uh, like one, uh, one by one ratio for two axes, right? And apparently, you know, we can, we can I don't know, shrink the, shrink the uh, the, uh, the x-axis to make x-axis more compact without changing something about the y-axis. Looks good, nothing is bad. And then we were able to get like 15% of the widths. And then there are a ton of still waste spaces here. It's just like blank, nothing is happening there. So what could we do? Like, you know, like, uh, like uh, maybe, you know, we can just block them out and then we just remove them. Like looks okay, right? And then and then and then and then it further shrinks like 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 the space. And then actually after doing these two steps, we were able to reduce widths by more than 30%, right? Which is good. Like assuming this is this is like I don't know, this is like a ton of lines of text you can write for this one. But actually, if you go back, you know, there are two dots being removed. From, from this process. And then actually the two dots are the crucial things they're trying to communicate through these two plots, right? So this one's telling you, hey, there's an outlier, and there's an outlier, and then, and then you're saying, for the merit of space, forget about it. <laughs> there's, there's no outlier, which is, which is like kind of distorting the information trying to communicate through this a plot here. So this is, a, this is a finding three, which is good visuals should communicate the intended information faithfully, you know, like, for whatever purposes, we should not lie, just like we should not like, lie in the text, we should not lie in the visuals. But actually, lying in the visuals is more nuanced, right? You know, it's not like intentionally you are trying to cut the space, but it's like, oh, for some glory purposes, I need to save the space. But actually, you are kind of doing this like, like sort of like hiding the fact that they're about the data. Yeah. Okay. So now, after seeing all the examples, let's start to think about this thing, which is like, can we do better for um, uh, this set of validations? Uh, like, uh, 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 I have a claim, which is the figure alone is not enough uh, for conveying the message. And, 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 and I, I want to really stop here and then ask your thoughts about, like, what do you think What's wrong with this figure? Or maybe, do you think there's any space for improvement for this figure? Yeah, maybe I should just stop for, for like, I don't know, two minutes, and then, and then let you look at it and then think about it, because I think this is like good practice. You are saying like maybe you can combine them into one figure different with different colors for the dots. That's cool. Yeah. Remove the box with the new and yeah, that's excellent point. Yeah. Please. You said this has the same problem as the big diagram we saw earlier, which is that the key takeaway message is kind of hidden here, right? So like, yeah. if you look at it long enough, you can see oh, like I guess mu and sigma and R are shared across all of these, but it's actually like not. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's an excellent point, which is, you're totally right, which is like, when I looked at this figure, basically, by the way, I recreate this figure uh, from some other examples, like specifically from the map plot, like, uh, example on the website, so, so, but you're totally right, which is like, I stare at it some time, saying, oh, yeah, I just compare the four boxes, and then it's like, oh, yeah, they're the same values, right, but then, you have to do the manual work. It's like very, like multiple step reasoning, right? You need to really figure out, oh, they're the same boxes. And then you need to look, really look into the box text and then compare that, which is like a long chain of reasoning, which, which, which takes a ton of energy from people. Excellent point, yeah. And why do you, and I think the extra point is that you only do a measurement for the X and Y axis. That's excellent, yes, excellent point, yeah. Like the, the, the point is, here, we don't really care about the, the absolute values here, right? We just care about the rough structure. We just want to tell people, yeah, this is a, like an, a, a coordinates. And then, and then the number here just, you know, making people confused, right? Excellent point, yeah. Okay, so any more thoughts? Or uh, we can proceed this journey of like, like uh, uh, making this figure better, yeah. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so the easiest thing people can do is like, huh, there's complicated information, right? We just add a bigger caption, right? Saying that, hey, we just tell people, you know, realization can highlight the differences of different, of the, of these four distinctive data sets that share the same mean standard deviation and regression line, right? So then people look at this and then look at the, the figure and say, oh, yeah, that's right, right? But, uh, this is, I, I claim this is like the least option you want to turn to, right? This is like, you know, if you only have five minutes to submit the paper, then you should just do this, right? But if you have more time, please do something with the visuals and then following our excellent points just mentioned by, by, the, by the people here. So um, can we highlight the message without the caption? Okay, let's zoom in to a specific plot, right? Because we just care about one thing now. So. I just list all these visual elements from this, of this plot here. So, uh, you know, there, let's go from the bottom to top. There's this axis line here, right, which is in, in black color, right? And then for the legend here, we have the legend text, we have the edge, we have the box, and then they, ha they are all in different colors, right? And then they have, there's this like regression line and there's this, all these dots and points, right? All in different colors, all have different shapes. And then now, we kind of decompose this the structure of this plot. And then, let's just go through them one by one and see how we can make things better. So the first step is, okay, I'm really annoyed by this, this legend, like boxes here, because virtually they are telling not too much information, but then they are using like this like jumpy colors, like, like orange and, 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 and yellow here. So one way maybe we can just make this like less stand out is trying to make this like in grayish colors, trying to de-highlight the, 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 the captions here for now. Uh, uh, and, then, and then think again, like I claim this is not like a traditional legend here because if you check traditional legends in papers, they are not talking about like actual data there. They're just talking about like, you know, the correspondence between the shape and their meanings, right? So I say, okay. We should fix this part, right? Uh, 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 we should have this, like, you know, data points and a regression line, right? And then, and then, and then, and then, but we cannot just throw away this, like, an intended message uh, 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 from 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 the um, um, from the uh, legend before, right? So we, I have to keep it somewhere, right? You know, I just put it there as like a, a, a cache, and then and then let's think about how to deal with this part, right? How 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 to how to communicate this part, right? So I think this is like a little point we can also stop and brainstorm a bit, like in which way we can show this information to people, right? Like visually, but not textually, right? So uh, um, I'm just curious about your thoughts because I, I, I took some time trying to figure out the best, I mean, somewhat solution here, but I feel like this could be like interesting practice for people. Yep. Right. Yep. Maybe with a different color. Yep. That's excellent point. Yep. 
And how about, I don't know, the standard deviation? How do you, how do you realize that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Yep. Any other thoughts? Okay, I, I, I want to give a hint, which is there's a big problem of this mu here because this, this is like two-dimensional plot, right? And it's showing you a mu in a single dimension, right? Because there should be like a mu x and mu y for this two dimension, but it's showing like one single number here. So is, that, that, that seems kind of be like, a, is there a hint or something like problems with this like internal data there as well? So given this thought here, maybe we can have this like horizontal lines and vertical lines indicating the same means as well, right? But, but, but okay, so let's go back, which is uh, one solution, just like you said. What's your name, by the way? Uh, Anamiso. yeah, okay. Anamiso thought there could be a dot indicating the, the, the mean value for the data point. And then we should, we should make some point, and then I try to make this more clear by adding this like dashed lines to indicate the like relative positions, right? But I also like uh, 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 okay, like I, I'll show later in, in the final version, but then I, I did some modification later. But also for this data point and regression line here, like I think they have two strong colors, which are intentionally caught people's attention. For, 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 for the actual data there, and then people cannot separate the message between them. Like that's my personal feeling, but, but, but I, I hope like, like I try to somehow de-highlight this information here a bit. And then finally we go to the access line here, which is, you know, that should not be in that dark color. That should be somewhat like de-emphasized. And then I, I point out this as two numbers here indicating the, uh, the mean value there, okay. So then, uh, a few moments later, <laughs> which is a typical practice for design, and then and I, I, I sort of modify something a bit and then try to apply this to all the plots here. But then here, I, uh, here it comes to the tricky part and the hard part of this class, which is like there are a lot of personal opinions about the visuals. But I, I, all I want to do here is trying to showcase people, hey, there is this repetition of the elements showing that, hey, this is, this is the same point with the same values here, like 9 and 7.5. And then, and then people can look at this, oh, this is data average, because we don't need to show legends for all the four subplots, right? And then, um, and then the, the regression line is also the thing I want to emphasize, which is, oh, yeah, they share the same regression line. And then the data point is something like less... Um, less critical, but also, also somewhat important, which is like, uh, like, I think I try to create layers. So the first layer is like, you see this plot, you will see this like, the dot, like the, the average point, the regression line, and then the numbers here. Just showing you, yeah, these are the three recurring same object, I mean, uh, across these four subplots, right? And then the second layer is like, okay, but if you look closer, there are this like, uh, sort of like transparent, blue points behind the screen, and then saying that, oh, you know what? Even though they have the same like, uh, like statistical data, like, uh, like static, static, statistical like characteristics, but then the underlying points are somewhat different. And then finally, the layer behind is this like axis, just showing you, oh, hey, this is like the, 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 the corner system and the plots, right? So, 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 so like, uh, Maybe there are still problems. I hope you can point out. Uh, if you really want, please. Uh, but I feel like this is like an attempt trying to show like, okay, there are different levels or layers of information we can communicate through different coloring and different like objects, different like uh, a structure trying to communicate this. And then if, you, if we go back and look at the previous example here, so Okay, yeah, the, the, the top one here is like, like have like less striking color to people because overall the, the color have like more transparent colors. 
But then, like, the, the, like I, I kind of like the, the top one, like the upper one, as like the, this plot is kind of flat, right? Because I could not really see what's being emphasized and de-emphasized from the bottom one compared to the one at top. So maybe I should, I should also stop for, I don't know, five minutes or two minutes to waiting, waiting for your critics about like my, my approaches here, yeah. Um, any sauce? <laughs> I'm really nervous about this part because, like, um, I made all this on the fly, so I feel like uh, uh, maybe something's missing there. So, yeah. Okay, maybe you can save. Oh, yeah, please. In the top one, uh, you had to omit, I guess, some information, for example, right. the standard deviation. Yes. That is omitted. Right. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. This is excellent uh, catch. Um, I made this through a choice, which is uh, all we want to say from this plot is like these four data sets have the identical statistical like characteristics, and then um, then this comes to this like like uh, subtle design choices in making visuals, which is like you know you it's very hard to want everything all together at the same time, right? So my approach to this, like, I know I can definitely communicate clearly about certain informations to draw people's attention, which is the, the, the same average and the same regression line, such that this will be a hook to lead people to think more about this data as well as some more ab abstract aspect of this data set, which we can provide in the caption. That, that's, a, that's a good time for using captions, right? And then, and then that's my like kind of like decision point at this time, which is like, okay, I choose to do that, even though there's some sacrifice. I feel like I, I feel like I just want to make the best of the intended information to be communicated. Yeah. Okay, excellent point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, so uh, I'll share the slides. You can take a closer look later, <laughs> but hopefully this is too uh, distracting for you. And uh, okay, but getting back to this final bullet points, just trying to grab what you said. We want to emphasize the same regression line and mean values, right? The neutral part is the data points, which is like, oh yeah, like we just, we need to show people this like factory about this, like faithfully about this data structure. And then finally, I wanted to emphasize the axis and the actual data values, just like what you mentioned. Like, by the way, what's your name? Uh, a statement, but also, like, uh, yeah. Mazias. Yeah, just, just like what you just mentioned, like de-emphasize de de the actual values here. So now we have this like layering system in terms of the plot here. And then uh, this goes to our the last finding, which is good visuals should, can emphasize important information or de-emphasize irrelevant details. Right, so so like like um, um, just giving people this like using visuals to guide people's thinking, and then, and then, and then I think I still want to show this, which like you know you, you you might want to have think about this as like recipe when designing your next visual. It's like oh, what are the key things I want people to know, and what are the other irrelevant stuff I just want to try to magically hide, but not really hide, not really distorting the data in some way, and I feel like this is like. This dual relationship between like emphasis and the emphasis is kind of like an interesting practice. Okay, so uh, I try to compress the, the four points into one slide, but then I, I feel like communicating this data and, and information efficiently, effectively, faithfully, and then learn to emphasize and de-emphasize is kind of the, the, the key building blocks that we are trying to go through again and again in this class, and then, and then, and then I want to stop here for a short break. I feel like uh, this is like okay time for us to take a little break because we'll go through more examples in the next like I don't know 20 or 40 minutes. So um, let's reconvene like in five minutes and then and then and then and also happy to chat. I'm I, I'm here. Yeah. By the way, what kind of tools are you using for making your visuals, may I ask? Uh, I use the Python network. I see, I see. Like even though for, 
uh, I mean, like more, I don't know, your first figure, right? You know, the, the, the diagram of your neural network, something like that. So for that, there's a website called diagram.net. I see, yeah. Got it, got it, got it, yeah. Yeah, that's like, they provide pretty good presets. You know, you just like drag and drop stuff, and then you can use it. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, please. Yeah, I've been using LucyChart recently. LucyChart? Yeah. Is there any future for that? or I've never heard about it. Like, that's my bad, but. Oh, OK. Um, it's just very, very simple and intuitive. Um, and it's very easy to collaborate with a lot of people simultaneously. OK, yeah. got it, got it. OK, I didn't need that to take a look, because like that seems the same feature as Figma. So <laughs> they, I use Figma a lot, and all the stuff were made, were made in Figma, which we'll talk in the next class. So, so, so we'll be taught. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Does anyone use you know Google Slides or PowerPoint to make <laughs> figures and, and do stuff? Okay. Yeah. Like, are you happy with that? Just, <laughs> just want, to, just want to, just curious. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, like I, I started making all the visuals from you know, PowerPoints and then, and then and the keynotes. And I won't touch Google stuff, but, but <laughs> anyway. Like, and, then, and I feel like, yeah, there are always some kind of pain points. Maybe they're too much. I, I already forgot <laughs> exactly what. But I feel like there is something, needs to be something more formal and more, you know, like, as a canonical approach to solve some of the design problems in my process. So i have kind of like trying to find a switch to the things here. Yeah. And, and, and maybe one last question is like, how long do you spend for making your visuals in, in, in like papers? Is it like, I don't know, two hours before the submission? Or maybe like, I don't know, 20 hours? <laughs> yeah. Or maybe it's hard to gauge because this thing is like so varied, yeah. Yeah, I typically, I don't know, like if I, I had this like two hour figure making session there as well, which is I can just make something reasonable, but I feel like for, for some stuff I'm gonna show you in the next big chunk of time, it took me really, really long time to, to make some of the figures there because I think it's about the design and thinking process that takes a ton of time. Um, if you're okay, maybe we can just start. I think I think I think people are fine with with this shorter break. I guess. Okay, maybe I just start and then and then jump to the next thing, and then maybe you can end earlier, so so everybody can get a few more minutes back. Okay, so this is the last key thing we're going to address now. After after finishing this, we can go back home, and then we we don't need to take this class anymore. We're just like okay, uh, 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 how do you make such figures, right? So the first the natural question to ask is like, okay, it's 2024. Come on, GPT-4 can do whatever, right? So, so, so why don't we try this, right? You know, like system message. You are a very experienced professional designer that can create beautiful and faithful visual space on description, right? It's, it's, you need to be faithful, right? And then, and then user prompt construct a diagram based on description and the picture, right? So here it is. So uh, apparently, I was taking a class last semester. Uh, by Professor Michael Sipser, and then uh, you know, in the piece, I need to recreate some of the diagrams from the book, right? Basically, this is a screenshot from the book, which you know, this like little structure of the dots. And I asked GPT for, hey, it's actually GPT for Vision. Say, given this plot, can you generate the tick like 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 code to render something like that? And this is this is a this is a masterpiece from GPT four, which uh, I don't know how to comment, but. Uh, it's just like so messed up. Like I can, I don't, I don't really know how to comment on this thing. Uh, uh, basically, the number of points is, is 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 inconsistent, right? There are nine dots, and then there's this only like I don't know, uh, eight dots, right? And then the structure is completely like, maybe you know someone who is good at like topology can you know, uh, disentangle the structure and then tell me they're the same. But I can really not tell if they are really the same. Uh, uh, one more example, which okay. I have it's my, my own hand drawing to show you maybe something simple, right? You know, there are only four nodes, simple structure there. And then 
I personally feel offended, like offend, feel offense from Moto because like, you know, they don't know what this is. And then they, they don't really know the arrows, directions, and then they miss an arrow. And then, and then, and then finally the, the, the four at the, at the top right is, 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 is some CF, I don't know what it is, right? One last attempt. This is another uh, a figure from uh, Professor Sipser's book. This is like, uh, you know, just trying to show you some structure about the tableau in, in the, some proofs. I want to recreate that. I don't want to spend all my time typing the latex command. And then this is a, another time which I feel like I don't really know what you're really doing in GPT-4. Because, uh, yes, it got the rough structure correct. But then uh, uh, all the details there is completely missing. And then, and then, and then all this, like, the, the supporting structure there is all kind of all over the place, which I can, I don't know how to even modify the code to use that, actually. So, uh, you know, perhaps not for visuals, not for now. Yeah. Uh, and then that means we have to do the work ourselves. And then, and then, and how to do that, right? So uh, let's go back to our previous practice of changing the coordinates, right? What did we do, right? We look at the examples and then we, okay. That is a shortcut, right? Because basically we did not doing something from scratch, right? We basically we're starting from existing examples. But then what we do is like, we have four experiments, right? For each of the experiment, we try to idea, like trying to generate some ideas about how to change and how to modify the figures, right? And then uh, we, we, we implement that changes, right? We just remove stuff, add stuff, you know, distort stuff. And then, and then finally, uh, we have this like inspect, or maybe just like a critical session. You know, we, 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 we try to evaluate and assess like how good the visuals are based on some of our goals and principles. I mean, we discover some of the principles, but actually in reality, we want to like align closely with this like design goals. And then, and then, and then, and then supposedly there, there should be this like cycle between them because apparently in our previous design, uh, like design challenge there, we iterate through this like, okay, we generate some ideas, we implement, we criticize and then we find it doesn't work, then we generate more ideas. So it's like a circle again, again. Um, I call it I, I, I cubed, but uh, I don't know, maybe it's like a bad name. Um, but then let's do more of this. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then basically, um, I think the best way to, to show you this process is trying to bring you closer to some of my previous experience for making figures in my papers because I clearly know what I've done, what are the mess I've created in these figures. And then, and, then, and then we can make this kind of interactive and then trying to um, dig, dig deeper into some of the ideas here. Okay. So the first one is, is Paper Mage. Uh, this, is a, this is a self plug, but this paper won like best demo award at a, some conference, some LP conference in, in last December. But, uh, but uh, the way we're going to do this is this. So we are going to read purely from the text, is, which is the abstract of the paper, just as like a brief like description of what the figure is about. And then you have to think about, okay, how can we make this first figure about the abstract, and then, and then think about some design components. And then finally, I'll show you some of my design, and then we start, the start with the critics, and then we just cycle, and then trying to find the, the last version, okay? So let's go to the first one. Like I don't really want to, you to I don't want to, you to spend that much effort, but I just want to create this explanation for you, which is okay. Paper Mage is an open source Python toolkit for analyzing and processing visually rich structured scientific documents. Uh, okay, this is a Python toolkit for processing documents. That is PDF files, right? And then Paper Mage offers clean and intuitive abstractions for seam seamlessly representing and manipulating both textual and visual document elements. So here, basically, the Python toolkit can represent and manipulate the document elements. Okay. Finally, Paper Mage achieves this by integrating desperate state-of-the-art uh, NLP and CV models into a unified framework and provides turnkey recipe for common scientific document processing use cases, right? So integrate different models into a unified framework, and then there's a turnkey recipe, which is 
all we need for making the visuals, right? You know, Python toolkit processing PDF document. That that is what this is, right? It has three features: represent and manipulate document objects, integrate different models into a unified framework, and then provide turnkey recipe, right? So, uh, okay, let's make a first figure for the paper based on these key points, uh, and then and then and then, guys, think think about. <laughs> Like, 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 what you can do with all this, like, uh, bullet points and snippets of information you try to convey, right? So, uh, this part is like, if you feel it's too slow paced, just tell me. But I, I, I think it's like I just trying to give you some time to think about it. Maybe you can like draw something, maybe on the table. Sorry, I did not bring any paper for you, but, 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 but just try to think about it based on this bullet points and aspects. And then, and then, and then, I think the process of thinking through this is kind of helpful for the next steps. Yeah. So, like, why would I want one figure for these? Right? It seems like there's two or three ideas at least in this, and that would suggest to me like two or three separate figures. Yeah, that that's excellent point. And um, um, uh, so there are like. Like we may indeed make several figures for the whole abstract, but I distill the part from the abstract that 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 we choose to make one figure based on this idea, and then sorry for the biased like version on this. But then the second point I want to uh, try to convince you is like um, it's kind of practice, which is like you know how to balance the amount of information when we want to put in the first figure to convince the reviewers. To clearly communicate the idea to the reviewers, as well as like, oh, they saw this figure, and then they try to get as much as possible in the process of reading this figure. It's kind of like a non-trivial thing, but also kind of interesting to play with. Yeah, and we can break down into more figures. Do this later. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you one more minute, and then we can. Do you want to say something? I guess my first thought is like for a first intro figure, I probably want to go concrete versus abstract. Yep. Give an example of usage because I'd assume that readers would not really. That's an excellent point. Yeah. To grab the more abstract version. Of it. Yep. Yep. That's excellent. Yep. So the I I need to say this to Zoom people. Basically, the idea is like we want to make this concrete version. Instead of this abstract version, to make the audience know what we're trying to do. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, okay. So let's jump to the first point. Let's, let's go through one by one, right? Okay. Like Python token and processing PDF documents, just like you said, right? What's your name, by the way? Josh. Josh, yeah, just like Josh said. Uh, we can show them some Python code and maybe stick a document image there to make things very concrete, right? Not something abstract and less tangible, right? Uh, okay. And then what to do with these three things, right? I, like maybe we don't have some good ideas. Uh, uh, so what I did is like, okay, whatever, we just do it. Like we just implement something uh, in, in Figma, which, um, okay, I should really do this, which is, uh, I, I have this cheat sheet here, just telling you like our design goals at the, at the top uh, right bottom, like s the corner. But then here, basically, uh, uh, okay, I should do this. So there is this like doc author, which is like Python like code, right? And then there's this like doc author seems to be like document objects, you know, trying to correspond to this like oh Python toolkit representing and manipulating these document objects, right? And uh, and um, you know, there are like you know transformer text models, CNN visual models, and PDF parsers, right? Kind of you know integrating many models, right? Sort of the idea in this plot. But uh, you know, what is this thing? I, I don't know. Like if it's clear on the slide, but then there are a bunch of like arrows pointing from the author to different layers here. What, what's this really, right? And then there's a lot of like wasted space. You know, we hate this like abuse of space here. And then and then and then you know, 
the turnkey recipe is missing from this diagram here, right? So, so it's still not the, the best design we can make, and there are some like problems we're trying to address. So uh, basically, uh, we made several iterations. So uh, this thing can scroll, uh, pretty cool. Uh, you know, we, 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 we try to, like, I try to make this more compact, um, try to have uh, the, the, like, the highlights more clearly, and then, you know, adding some, like, little, like, uh, uh, oh, sorry, little visuals for, for each of the models, trying to make people clear, yeah, there are different models from different resources, and, uh, and I should, and, and then maybe, you know, I try to do some explorations just telling you, hey, there are different objects making this, making this point more clearly, you know, there are, Document dot paragraphs, document dot sentences, right? So, 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 as a, you know, there are different colors. It's it's red and it's violet. So people can show, oh yeah, there are different like objects you can play with. But still, like, that's that just makes things more confused. And it's still, I uh, like okay, maybe this is a this is what we can achieve with this design here, maybe. So, uh, um, okay, I I I want to wait for a second and hear your thoughts about about. This design basically this is kind of like your practice of like how to criticize and how to you know inspect the design here and then, and then, and then and then trying to reflect how it translates the uh, the, the design goals into into this, this visual here. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, so there are two excellent comments, which is like the, the, the font size rate issues, which, which I, I firstly, I, I, I have to admit, this is like, I did not really alter the original figure because it's for like people read on papers. Uh, but you're right, we should, you know, in the future class, we should definitely cover this about like the font size issues. But also the second point is really, really important, which is, you know, you basically, you know nothing about this paper. Right, and then this figure cannot send a message to you to give you clear perspective about what the what the, what the paper is about, right? Basically, like that's 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 that seems to be there's a, like a problem of the of the of the of the uh, of the figure's ability to packaging to package this information to 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 a wide range of audiences, which 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 is also the exact reason why we we did not choose to use this one. Any, uh, any more comments? Or, or uh, we, we can proceed to the next version because there are many iterations. Yeah, okay, maybe this will be answered later. I guess. Yeah, please. If I'm thinking from a story perspective, I often think about papers as having like a kernel of like a problem solution or question answer format. Yeah. And the problem or question of the paper is not really clear to me in this yeah, abstract. Yeah. I see mostly like the solution or the tool. Right, 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 right. Um, yeah, so, you yeah, know. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I think. The question is like, you know, we only know what the tool is about, but we don't know what the problem is trying to solve. So it's hard to create a visual purely based on the, the what part, but not about the reason, about the why part, right? And, and the second point, which is like next time if I were to do this class again, like I'll, I'll add this part. And also this, that, that, that's really important in terms of us designing the, uh, the visuals, which is like still going back, right? The why is like I mean the why and the what is, is, is like they are both the key piece of the information we're trying to convey. But what you just said is like we need to know both parts such that we 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 can make it really clear about the message we're trying to convey when designing this visuals, which is like excellent point. Yeah. Okay. So let's jump to the next version, which is uh uh okay, so since we're talking about Python programming, like Python toolkit, maybe one thing we can do is trying to draw analogies from real world objects, you know? 
we can make some, we can mock some like program interfaces directly uh, 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 in, in our visuals. And then uh, uh, um, now I start to change the structure a little bit, which, which I added this like, you know, Python command line type of structure at the top to give people a sense of, 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 of what it is. And then, and then, and then it's, it started to become like a little bit more compact because there are like less wasted white spaces. So, so, so start to feel kind of professional-ish. But then still, like, it's not a perfect one because we're still missing some key components. But I continue to do some iterations here. Uh, 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 basically, you know, I, I, I explore different ways trying to correspond the code at the top with the visuals, right? So I try, you know, this like cur like like curly like pointers, and then this like a uh, 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 more like uh, rectangular ish pointers, and then and then and then and then, I don't know. I just move this to the bottom as a way to show people what's going on here, and then finally, uh, uh, I know I try to make this more abstract, trying to have this dock. And then there are different layers we can retrieve at the, at the bottom, like doc authors and et cetera, which, which still is, is kind of like, like, and then I, there's like a recipe that runs something, right? Which trying to incorporate like a turnkey recipe for doing stuff. But it's still like, maybe not the best one I can try to sell the message to people. So uh, 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 I want to jump to the last version, which is like, how about making a Jupyter Notebook like interface? Uh, so this is non-trivial because I have to con con like confess here, because at that time I was working on another project about like you know adding AI support for Jupyter notebooks. So I thought a lot about that interfaces, and I happened to have some visuals floating around for that design. It's called Chapter, and 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 and, and you can search for that. But uh, but then now things start to become more like uh, on the right track. Which is uh, basically I, I I recreated this whole Jupyter notebook like by the way you are familiar with Jupyter notebooks right uh, okay I recreated the whole Jupyter notebook like structure so here you have the first line of code execution right basically saying oh paper mage dot parse this paper and then this visual apparently you cannot see this similar visual in Jupyter notebooks but it's okay we are not saying we are making this tool that way right but in here. Basically, I have the doc, and I'm boring the design of Jupyter Notebooks like autocomplete, saying that, you know, given this doc, you can retrieve different types of objects here, you know, title, authors, abstract, and sentences. And then, and then, and then it goes back to specific layers as a medium. It's trying to say retrieving the, the, the structure. And then here, we have all this like annotations telling you, okay, there are different layers here. And then, um, uh, 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 if you check this cheat sheet, you will figure out, oh yeah, the, this is like, it's got almost like the components you want, right? This is a Python toolkit, of course, it's in Jupyter Notebook. And then it pro processes PDF documents, because if you check here, it's, it's like, yeah, the PDF thing is being processed. And then uh, it represents and manipulate document objects, because you see here from the, uh, like the hints, uh, it just shows you the different like, uh, uh, document objects. And then finally, it says like, oh, it integrate different models into Unify framework, which is also showing some of the ideas there. And then finally, uh, it misses this part, like provide turnkey recipe. Uh, we need to fix this. So we start the journey of this like more implementation. So uh, 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 we did a few iterations, basically uh, uh, from, from this version here, uh, we say, okay, we have this recipe to run, making clear the idea of this turnkey recipe, and then and then and then we added this like little annotation saying, "Oh, access a layer," just telling you this access is the data generated by the hacking based model, and then and then and then anyway, I just show you the last one, which is uh, it becomes more compact. You see, the the height of the figure is shrinking one by one gradually, and the technique is that okay, we are removing some of the blank spaces of the top layer here because we are not really using anything there. So basically we can remove the spaces here to further save the space. And then ha now this is the final design, which uh, you know, this is the one I showed you just now. And then this is one, the final version, we saved like 25 of the space, maybe not that much. But then that, that is like infinite lines 
of text, right? Because you know, LaTeX can randomly compile things and then shifting things around, so you can fit in more stuff. Uh, but okay, so let's 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 look at this again, which I, I hope it can solve you some of your <laughs> like 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 questions or maybe your complaints about this figure now, right? Uh, but I feel like the the te technique here is like borrowing some of the familiar interfaces to people can like make people familiarize and then can give people a strong sense about this tool, like where it can be used and where it can where it can be be done, and then. Uh, the A part is like, you know, it's actually like we kind of simplify the command a little bit to make the visual like more clear, but then you, you know it's like recipe. And the B part is like, oh, you have this different, la different types of models and then, and then different layered data being executed and stored after running the recipe. And then finally the C part is like, oh yeah, you have this like document object with different attributors, attributes you can like access and then manipulate with the document data being stored. So I think that that fulfills our like design goals here. Oh, I, it's a spoiler, but but I want to stop here for I don't know for two two minutes and then and then, and then, I don't know if, if you really like that or maybe if you think that's like a good design. <laughs> but I feel like I'm I'm kind of like happy with this one and I'm 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 curious about I'm I don't know like I'm 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 curious about your thoughts after seeing this journey as well as like what's your takeaway from this part? Maybe what's your criti critics for this part of design? Yeah. I think the like the, the final version makes the idea much more clear that compared to what yep. you have initially they put down all the points. But I have a question. Yeah, please. So, so you had all these points, right? Like it has to be Python, uh, it yep. has to like all the points that you want to incorporate here. Yep. So do you did you like come up with that before you made made the figure? Like all the points you, you want to incorporate and then you went to figure or was it like Simultaneously, you were making the figure and coming up with the points at the same time. Yeah, that's that's an excellent point. Yeah, so the, thank you. The, the question is, uh, 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 did I come up with all the bullet points before making the figure, or they just surfaced during the process of making the figure? And actually, it's um, it's really hard to say because, uh, like, I wrote about this in the in the in lecture note, which I sent you like later after this class, which is uh, we. As researchers, we have unique advantages for making the figures, and the biggest part is like we are often those who came up with this original like ideas of 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 the uh, of the toolkit as well as of the things we're going to write in the paper, right? And um, uh, so it's already kind of rooted in our head. But the other point is, just like I said at the beginning of the class, like making visuals is also a way to help us to think and a reason about the data and the information here. So it's sort of like a symbiosis process, which is like, I, I kind of kind of clear about the message I'm trying to convey. But also like the, the process of making figure, trying to de-emphasize and emphasize information, kind of make this structure more clear and more, more crystal clear to me. So I really want to answer you, did I know that before or afterhand? But I feel like this is like, I sort of know the points before the hand, but I feel like since I'm making the slides, I'm explaining this idea to you. So it's kind of like, it's a bit of contrived, right? Basically, I think in reality, you will figure out the ideas, like figure out, find this, like finding more clarity about the ideas afterhand, yeah. And I feel that the point is like making the visual, spending time is kind of a way to polish your ideas as well. Any more thoughts? Uh, uh, do you think still like, 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 like too compact of information we're trying to convey, or? Yeah, please. I'm curious why you opted to go with the layers versus having it kind of on one sheet, and then using color to demarcate some of these things. I understand that there might be some overlap in how you are visually representing like paragraphs and sentences right here, mm -hmm. but I imagine if you chose like the correct way of being able to show what it is that you're referring to, yep. you might be able to have a design where you just have a single page, essentially, yep. that can yep. show this information demarcated. 
That's like some point. So uh, I, I cannot really show you, but we, we try to make a ver version about that. So the question is like, now we use this like slanted view of the layers instead of this like, you know, regular rectangular view of each layer, which should present the information more clearly and, 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 and maybe if properly designed, it can still do the same job as the models here, right? So we actually tried that thing before, which is, you know, we, we can have, a, you know, we can have a stack of boxes uh, so the idea is like okay for these three boxes they are generated by you know like hugging face models this is like the the, the LP models layout LP parser models and the this is like the PDF parser models right so so each of them maybe this is like uh, uh, I don't know like maybe title author and abstract. And they have different structures on them, right? So, so uh, we try, try that idea, uh, but I, I think this is my personal opinion. This is like my personal approach to this. But uh, 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 when I try this, I figure like, I, I did not see like a proper way to stack them in like a succinct manner like the one there. Uh, because like, because this figure is for uh, 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 like uh, for the first figure of a half like of a double column paper. So like imagine like this is actual PDF like this is actual like the letters letter page you have. You have this like longish stuff like 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 this is like slanted like rectangle to put your figures. And then and then this is like the rectangular structure is more like a rectangle like a square like shape which is kind of suitable for like the I mean you can put this here but then it, it will turn out to be something like a very tiny for each of the boxes which the information will be less legible in the end so that's like one design choice because we because the figures like the you know have to be somewhat slanted right and the second thing is like think again this goes back over like uh, idea of like emphasize the emphasize right so the point of having this rectangles here is trying to show people clearly what's going on on each of the page of the predictions and then the structure there right but we are less like this is something we want to de-emphasize we want to, we don't care that much right because like because in reality in this figure we did not show people like the accuracy of the system right we did not show people the actual structure the the uh, the the, the, like the predictions, we do not we, we do not need to show them very very clearly in some sense, right? We just want, want you to know, yeah, there are this like predictions. So this this like uh, this stacked structure can do sort of the, the emphasis in terms of like putting them stacked in the in a layered fashion uh, because like there are some overlappings, but there's also somewhat transparent. You see the rough structure, you see the rough correspondence. I don't know, maybe I should make the figure bigger next time, or maybe you can check it out like after I send the slides to you. But then, but then, but then because you can see the rough correspondence between you know, this and the bottom one, and this and the bottom one. So you see, oh yeah, roughly, that's a structure there, right? So then it's kind of like trying to uh, um, de-emphasize some of the clear structure of the, of the, of the individual like layers, so that's, and I, and I happen to, to know how to create this like stacked views. And that's like a combination of three goals, you know, the, the, the shape of the figure, uh, um, uh, trying to de-emphasize some of the information, and, and about the toolkit I am familiar with to create this like stacked view to get us to this point, yeah. By the way, I, I'll tell you how to, how to make this like in the next lecture, so yeah. I mean, here is more about conceptual level, like how do we organize information, but then later I'll tell you the techniques for making this stuff, yeah. It, it does that sound, sound right, or, yeah, cool. Okay. Um, if there are no more questions, uh, we can jump to the next example, and then that'll be our last example in this class, which is Simgen, which uh, happened to be the paper that Lucas and I co-authored, uh, and then we just got it out like recently. But uh, this will be quicker than the previous one. The idea is like, okay, similar, similar deal. We go through the abstract. So the, the paper proposes symbolic granite generations as a simple approach for enabling easier validation of an LLM's output, right? So the goal is trying to 
having easier validation of the large junction model's output. And then SimGen prompts the large junction model to interleave its regular output text with explicit symbolic references to fields present in some conditioning data. Right? So it's like interleave with explicit symbolic references. And then finally, uh, the references can be used to display the provenance of different spans of text in the generation, reducing the effort required for manual verification. So now, trying to display the provenance and reducing the effort required. So now, if, 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 if we uh, take the bullet points together, the goal is trying to do easier verification of the LM output. Method is trying to interleave explicit symbolic references and display the provenance, which is like three key things. And then uh, I, want to, I want to mention about this, like I think Josh just mentioned this problem about like um, understanding the whys, right? Because like in the Simpson example here, we are slightly focused on the whys, but also like each of the bullet points feels like verbs, right? You know, easier verification, interleave, display, right? But then the paper mage one is feels like nouns, right? They're just like, oh, it's a Python toolkit. It, it can do stuff, but it feels like the static objects. So there's like nuanced differences in these two examples here. So uh, for the matter of time, uh, um, I'll just show you the first one, uh, the first design example I've just made, and then and then and then and then and I think this is like a good time for you to learn to do more critics of this design here. But I feel bad because I think the projector did not cannot properly show some of the details <laughs> because maybe I've used too much gray colors, but I, 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 I'll, just, I'll just show you the, 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 the three bullet, bullet points here. And then, and, then, and, then, and then maybe you can read the figure and then try to tell me like, in which way you don't like about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I guess the biggest problem here is like if the point of paper is about verification, there's actually no verification in this diagram. You're exactly right. Uh, that's, yeah. I just, like, can't figure out. <laughs> yes, you're, you're exactly right. So, so it's it's not clear about the key objective, right? Basically, just show what we did, like, and then maybe it's not clear either how we did the stuff, right? It's it's yeah. it's, it's kind of unclear. So 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 basically, uh, it's it's kind of not clear, but also there's like interleave explicit number references. That's the thing we can do here. Which is sort of like, oh yeah, there's this like, eh, there's this like text and then some of the structure here, symbolic ish thing, but it's kind of like not super clear and 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 and, and, and crisp, right? Okay. Any other thoughts? Or oh, I can jump to the next one. Okay. So I just jump to the next one then. Uh, so we did some changes, we try to adapt feedback. So now, uh, do I have the cheat sheet here? Yeah, I have. So now this is our final design, and, 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 and now let's think again. So basically, it's still the same data here, it's still the same JSON as, a, as the previous page. But here we show two approaches. One is the standard generation, which you know, you ask ChatGPT, that's the thing you will get from ChatGPT, right? And then, and, then, and, then, and then you see that, oh yeah, um, 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 there is pretty good, but then if you really want to check where does this 30 comes from, you really don't know, right? Because like you have to manually scan through the text and then see how it goes. So now, if you check our version, so the idea is, okay, we, we try to enable better verification, or easier verification, 
in terms of, you know, if you hover over the 30 here, it will show you the provenance from the source. And it will show you, yeah, it is referring to the data in here, right? And now we are using this like little hints of this like regular text and then this like, there's actually like a shade of like blue behind the text to indicate there's like explicit symbolic references as well as like regular text. So that is like a, 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 like a, a, a kind of technique to, to make it more clear and crisp. I know, like Josh, I'm, I'm looking forward to you, like predicts. <laughs> I mean, here, now you have this line that's pointing back to the data, yep. the verification line. Right. Which is missing from the original. Right, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I talked a bit more, and I'm looking forward to your thoughts. But, but, okay. So the idea is like, okay, there's a key point here, which is like, how do we convey the idea of easier verification of language model outputs, right? So if there's a comparison, you need to show something that's not easy, right? So people know this is a baseline you are comparing to, which somehow we decided to put this one there. And then, and then, and then, and then now if you see this one, you see, ah, yes, the 30 is like, because there are two 30s here, right? It's not that straightforward. And then in reality, there are many 30s in the data. So it just, just makes the searching process even harder. And then now that I'm showing this, which is like there's a clear evidence of this like provenance you can turn to in our case here. So that's the technique we've used there, which is like the easier part, which is like you need a comparison and contrast. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we are almost run out of time, but I'll just wait for any last thoughts. And then, and then, and because I think everything here, there's no like gold answers. I'm just trying to showcase like my thinking process and my design process as a way you can learn something, maybe find something helpful for your next design. But I feel like there's always room for improvements for, 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 for any of the visual what's showing today. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let, then let's move to the final ones. So now, like, we go back to this initial slide, like how to make such visuals. So in the end, you find that, you know, the process is mostly nonlinear, right? You know, you, like, it turned out to be like this, like, circular paths is not always the case. Basically, we just think about something, we do something, we have some ideas, we do something more, and then we ask for critics, and then we do something more, and then, you know, our brain exploded in some sense. But, 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 but that's, 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 that's how you become more clear about the information you're trying to convey, and be, like, be more confident about showing this stuff to other people, which I'm not so confident, actually, because it's not always to be improved, but anyway, okay. Uh, but anyway, to summarize, like the, idea, the, the ideation part is like, you know, you might want to check similar designs, you want to find some inspirations. For example, you know, bringing something from Jupyter Notebooks to, to, to the design here, right? And then, and then you might want to start from people's existing designs, you know, the, the, uh, the, the realization of the, uh, the quartets, right? And then implement is about like, you, want, you, you, you really want to do things fast and then do something like, you know, maybe it could be like, like, a, a, like somewhat roughly, but then, but then you want to have the handy tool to enable to implement things very, very fast, so you can iterate on that. And then, and then that's that. That will be the focus of the next few like lectures, trying to get you hands on very quickly about the tools. And then finally, inspect is like, I think, I think I try to I try to guide the discussion, or maybe. Uh, like my, my comments in terms of the in terms of trying to focus on um, the information to be conveyed right so every time we have the bullet points there trying to know what are we trying to tell people and we're trying to stick to the principles we derived at the very beginning of the class trying to say oh yeah does it do a do a job for emphasis being emphasized does it do a job for effective efficient and then, and then faithful communication right so then um, but basically, try, just trying to wrap up. So this class, we focus on the whole pipeline, more conceptual level, and the next few classes will focus on the, the concrete like implementation and the techniques for the tools, and then building those visuals. Okay. So now, uh, yeah, this is uh, this class. We covered the reason why do we make visuals, which it helps us to communicate information. It helps us to think about the problems, right? And what constitutes a good visual? So there are four points, right? Efficient, effective, 
phase four and emphasize the emphasize information, right? And how to make such visuals? We have this three, like the I cubed process, like ideate, uh, implement, and uh, inspect. And then finally, case study, we have, I show my two of my poor designs to you and then hopefully there's something helpful for you. Okay, so uh, again, this is like last slide, but I, I think it's cute just showing you this like four versions of design we made throughout this process. And then finally, uh, this diagram, just trying to, as a, as like a, a pipeline you might want to turn to for your future design process. Okay, and then we're running out of time. Thank you for being here. Cool, cool, thanks.